Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. Salim Shahzad, a Pakistani journalist murdered, whose body was found on May 31st in a canal outside of Islamabad. Salim was a Pakistan bureau chief for Asia Times Online. He was an often contributor to The Real News Network. In fact, we interviewed Salim only a few days before he disappeared and, was, and then was later found, killed. Salim had recently written a book that was published just days before his death titled Inside Al-Qaeda and the Taliban Beyond 9-11. Gareth Porter, investigative journalist and historian, has, has a copy of the book, has been going through it, and he's going to report now on its contents. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thank you, Paul. So what, what's the first main beat in his book? I think the, the major theme that emerges from this book that is extremely important is just how uh, the Al-Qaeda uh, strategists who were, uh, to, to whom uh, Salim Shahzad was given unique access over the past few years, were telling him that their real objective beyond Afghanistan was to divide the Islamic world uh, sharply between the rulers uh, the, the, the regimes of these uh, uh, countries that, that are largely Islamic and the populace whom they hoped they could provoke into uh, uprisings against them or Quruj as the, uh, in the Arabic term. Um, and in, in order to do that, what these Al-Qaeda strategists told Shahzad uh, was that they saw the U.S. NATO occupation of Afghanistan as the biggest single benefit uh, to their strategy. And of course, uh, this, this would also apply as well to Iraq. But the strategists of Al-Qaeda were located there in Pakistan and were involved directly in the war uh, in Afghanistan. And so that's what they were focusing on in terms of their view of what would benefit their bigger global strategy. And so they viewed the U.S. NATO occupation as good for Al-Qaeda, and they wanted to continue. And that, I think, is really a major story that has not been covered uh, at all by the uh, world's press. I mean, there, there's some irony to this, is that in the aftermath of 9-11, instead of a full-scale invasion of Afghanistan, because of the, uh, a quite separate agenda we now know by the Bush-Cheney regime of wanting to go after Iraq, they used 9-11 not as a big-scale invasion of Afghanistan, but to head to Iraq. And, of course, the irony of all that for al-Qaeda is that it, it creates a situation where, in fact, Iran benefits greatly in, in the final analysis in Iraq, having a government in Iraq that's very, uh, probably as friendly or more friendly with Iran than it is with the United States. But then, and then the double irony is, after all of that, the U.S. does do a full-scale invasion of Afghanistan. So, in the end, al-Qaeda kind of gets what apparently it wanted. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, there's no doubt that uh, Al-Qaeda was the primary benefactor of the U.S. NATO war in Afghanistan. Uh, they were able to use that uh, to show the uh, populations around the world, the Islamic populations around the world, that in fact, uh, the, the, not only was the United States uh, uh, you know, on the wrong side of history and, and against Islam, uh, because they were occupying Islamic lands, but that Al-Qaeda, in fact, was the primary force helping uh, the resistance uh, to fight the United States and NATO in Afghanistan, and of course as well in Iraq. Uh, so, so it was viewed as really strategically the, the single most important thing going on for Al-Qaeda. And, and what uh, also emerges very interestingly in Shahzad's book is that al-Qaeda strategists, the single biggest thing that they worried about was that there would be some kind of a peace deal that would allow the United States to withdraw its forces from Afghanistan. That's the one thing that al-Qaeda, more than anything else, wanted to avoid. So when Saudi Arabia, in 2007, had a meeting uh, in which they invited, to which they invited uh, a representative of uh, Mullah Omar's uh, leadership, uh, as well as some former uh, officials of, uh, of the Taliban um, and some people from the uh, Karzai regime, the uh, Al-Qaeda Al strategists were absolutely ap apoplectic. They regarded this 
as a very serious and dangerous American plot, which they had to respond to. And that was, according to Shazad's account, why the uh, al-Qaeda strategists then launched this offensive by the Taliban, the, the Pakistani Taliban, into SWAT, which of course caused a huge uh, uh, panic in Washington, D.C. SWAT as, being the, on the, uh, the border, Pakistan-Afghan border. That, that's right, in Pakistan, and this was, this was the furthest reach of the uh, Pakistani Taliban towards Islamabad uh, in the entire conflict in Pakistan. So there was a great deal of concern uh, in Washington and, and very strong uh, response from Washington threatening Pakistan that they had to do something about it. Well, what was really going on there was that um, al-Qaeda was very concerned that they needed to buck up the Taliban in Afghanistan by having this diversionary move uh, in Pakistan so that uh, the balance of forces would again be uh, in favor of, uh, of the Taliban in Afghanistan uh, and, and that uh, the Taliban would not be tempted to make any deal with the United States. The, uh, when I talked to Salim about just what is al-Qaeda now, he, he estimated that there's probably only about a hundred members of al-Qaeda, but the point he made that is it represents sort of almost like an intelligentsia in some ways. They're strategists. They're, some of the senior members of the Taliban, he said, are also members of al-Qaeda. So it's not that they represent some large fighting force, as he described to me. It m represents more that the, uh, it's a way to influence other fighting forces. Is that the picture you get in the book? Very clearly, that's right. Uh, what, what he was very impressed by in terms of al-Qaeda strategy was just how clever they were in using the uh, tribal areas, the population of the tribal areas of Pakistan as a uh, military political base of operations, not just for the Taliban in Afghanistan, but for the global strategy of al-Qaeda to turn uh, this population into really the first major uh, Islamic insurgency against uh, a government of an Islamic country, that is the, the state of Pakistan. Um, and so what he argues, I, I think quite uh, cogently, uh, that is to say, Shahzad argues in the book, is that, the, that, that Al Qaeda basically merged into uh, the, primarily the Pakistani Taliban organization. Uh, and, and essentially, that organization then took on the ideology and the strategy that uh, Al Qaeda's strategist really came forward with originally. Now, this points to a, a, a date which you talk about in an article you have coming up and is in his book which is that, in fact, there seems to have been a deal to begin with between Musharraf and al-Qaeda after 9-11, uh, leave each other alone and we'll leave you alone, um, which, which then, under American pressure, Pakistan starts going after al-Qaeda and the deal breaks. Is this part of what leads to this, more, this Pakistan Taliban taking on the Pakistani state? Definitely. Uh, the way uh, Shahzad tells the story uh, both sides, both the ISI and the uh, Pakistani military under uh, Musharraf, as well as al-Qaeda, were ready to continue to have a live and let live policy uh, because both of them had interests that overlapped, um, particularly on Lakshari Taiba, the terrorist organization that was uh, operating in Kashmir. Um, and so after 9-11, they were continuing that uh, very ginger uh, uh, cooperation, but uh, soon after that, in 2003, you had a series of incidents which really caused the breakdown of that relationship. On one hand, you had uh, a, an attack by the Pakistani military using helicopters in uh, South Waziristan, which caused uh, the deaths of a number of al-Qaeda militants. And clearly, uh, the Al-Qaeda organization was very upset about that, and they decided to retaliate. And the way Shahzad tells this story, uh, the two attempts on Musharraf's life in December 2003 were, uh, were clearly a follow-up, a retaliation uh, to the, uh, the, the Pakistani military attack through helicopters against uh, Al-Qaeda. Uh, and, of course, at that point, then, Musharraf uh, decided to crack down on al-Qaeda, and uh, I think both sides then went into a, 
a kind of uh, a cycle of uh, revenge, uh, one side taking revenge against the other, and I think it, it has never recovered from that. I guess Salim's main point, from, uh, from what I take from what you're saying, is that U.S. policy, in your article you quote the book, uh, they were relied on American cowboyness, or cow uh, the, you could rely on the U.S. to come in swinging, and they essentially wanted that. So, so we would take from that, the longer the U.S. and the more the U.S. is in Afghanistan, the better al-Qaeda likes it. Well, that's right. And, and by the way, uh, one of the key points that Shahzad makes in his book is that the, the fundamental strategy of al-Qaeda to use the aggressiveness of the United States against it was really something that came from uh, Dr. Ayman Zawahiri, not from uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, it turns out, according to Shahzad, and, and he has, I, as again, I, I said, uh, he, he has unique access to al-Qaeda strategists over the years, and I think this is uh, really an authoritative view. It was Zawahiri who convinced bin Laden that if he attacked the United States on its own home soil, the United States would respond with an attack on Afghanistan, and then there would be a whole new situation which al-Qaeda could uh, exploit for its own advantage. And so it was really Zawahiri who was the strategic genius, if you will, who uh, was able to take advantage of this analysis to benefit al-Qaeda's global strategy. Now, the, the articles that Salim was writing before he was killed was more specifically about uh, support for the Taliban and al-Qaeda within the Pakistan military. He was writing about the attack on the uh, Pakistani naval base. Uh, talking about that there may have been a, an actual al-Qaeda cell within the uh, Navy. And then he, wrote, he, in our interview, he talked quite a bit about how retired and, somewhat, and formerly purged members of the Pakistan intelligence agencies and military had actually joined up with either the Taliban or al-Qaeda. Um, what, what do you know about this piece of it? Well, that's right. He does, he does talk about the fact that some uh, veterans of the Pakistani military did go into al-Qaeda. In fact, one of the people that he talks about uh, was uh, instrumental in, uh, in some very key al-Qaeda uh, terrorist operations in uh, Pakistan. Um, and, and so, you know, he regards the contribution of some ex-military people as important uh, to al-Qaeda's strategy there. But he doesn't really talk in his book about anything um, uh, about infiltrating uh, specific uh, parts of the Pakistani military by al-Qaeda. That's something that he did not talk about. In, in the interview he did with The Real News, he says that this new pressure since the capturing of bin Laden, uh, capturing, <laughs> capture and killing of bin Laden, uh, that th this increased U.S. pressure on, on the Pakistani intelligence and military to cooperate has further split the Pakistani armed forces. He actually used the word in our interview of possible mutinies within the Pakistan military uh, because there's such discontent and anger over the extent to which Pakistan is collaborating with the uh, U.S. Uh, war in Afghanistan and generally in the region. Well, he certainly anticipates, uh, that is, Shahzad anticipates uh, the uh, further development of, uh, of splits within the Pakistani uh, political system over the issue of pressure from the United States because he talks about the anticipation uh, by the al-Qaeda strategists earlier on that U.S. pressure on the Pakistani military would cause uh, the Pakistani military to join up fully with the U.S. war on terrorism and that that in turn would again benefit the larger strategy of al-Qaeda in Pakistan. It would make it possible to launch a, uh, an uprising uh, within Pakistan against the Pakistani state. So I think he was certainly anticipating that this would continue to take place, but uh, I think the developments that he was referring to in his interview with you were things that have happened since uh, his book was completed, so it's not, it's not really discussed there. So the fundamental uh, theme of the book, it seems, is that the, the more aggressive the U.S. gets, uh, the more it strengthens AQ forces, uh, and, and so they're quite happy with the current uh, policy. Absolutely, and, and this, of course, is exactly the opposite of the narrative that you get from the U.S. military and the Pentagon when uh, Robert Gates and uh, uh, Admiral Mullen were testifying before the 
uh, Congress in Dece early December uh, 2009 uh, to, to provide a justification for the escalation of the war in, in Afghanistan by the United States. I mean, they took the line, of course, that the worst thing that could happen was for the United States to withdraw uh, from Afghanistan because then uh, the uh, Taliban and al-Qaeda would have won against the world's only remaining superpower and that that would have had terrible consequences for the United States and the world. Uh, of course, this represented a complete misunderstanding of al-Qaeda, uh, uh, of the al-Qaeda uh, global as well as local uh, strategy. And, uh, and by the way, it also misunderstood fundamentally the relationship between the Taliban and al-Qaeda. One of the other revelations in his book, although it's not the only place where there's evidence of this, is that, uh, that al-Qaeda and Taliban had very, very different views of course, on strategy uh, with regard to you know, where the emphasis should be and indeed whether al-Qaeda should be carrying out a, an uprising, trying to launch an uprising against the Pakistani regime. Uh, Taliban, uh, Mullah Omar was very strongly opposed to that. Uh, and one of the very interesting revelations in the book by Shahzad is that the creation of the tariq e taliban the neo-Taliban, in Pakistan by al-Qaeda was in large part to try to draw the Afghan Taliban away from the leadership of Mullah Omar because they viewed Mullah Omar as somebody who was not ready to go along with al-Qaeda strategy. So once again, I mean, the whole idea that Mullah Omar is somehow in bed with bin Laden and al-Qaeda strategy is completely wrongheaded. It always was from the beginning. Well, the book again is called Inside Al-Qaeda and the Taliban Beyond 9-11 by Salim Shahzad. Um, I guess it will be available soon, somewhere. Um, maybe we'll try to get hold of it, make it available here. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thanks very much, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.